Okay, hi all. My name is Fran. I'm a Spanish from. I live, uh, I live in Seville. I'm a Drupal developer. I started to work with Drupal. Uh, I don't remember. I started with Drupal 5, so it's been a lot of time. Um, yeah, I work for One X uh, internet company. Uh, you can find me in Drupal or in Franceva. Okay, and my Twitter is Fran. Please, uh, you can download the slides from there, and also the link is in, yeah, in the previous slide. Uh, you can download from Twitter. Yeah. So hello, welcome everyone. I'm Melinda Kovács-Stankovic. I'm Hungarian, but I live in uh, Frankfurt um, with my husband and uh, our babies on the way also. <laughs> I'm, a <laughs> uh, I'm a front-end developer. I was formerly an accountant, but I found out that actually uh, coding is much more fun. So <laughs> since... <laughs> since uh, <laughs> it's really true. <laughs> So since three years, I'm working at uh, One X Internet as a front-end developer. You pass, okay. Uh, we work for One X uh, Internet. It's a digital agency, okay, uh, uh, based on Drupal development. But that's not all. We also do React development, IT, maintenance, uh, online marketing, strategy, all the thing. Okay. Uh, we are based on Frankfurt, but we have uh, we are working from different countries: Spain, Brussels, uh, uh, Germany. Uh, yeah, also, where, where is? Yeah, I think that's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in, in different cities. Okay. What are we going to cover here? Okay. Can someone tell me here what is S, what means SVG? Scalable vector graphics. Yeah, we are covered that topic, okay? We're going to, to go through three main parts, okay? We're going to do a brief introduction to SVG images. We're going to explain how to use SVG images and then show how, show three examples of what to, how to use SVG images with Drupal and do some blazing animation things, okay? But first, I'm going to show you an example with the goal. I think we're going to get at the end of this session and you're going to be able to think how to, uh, you're going to know how to do that, okay? You're not going to be able to do this directly, but you're going to have the basics to do this thing, okay? Let me show you what is the mouse. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay, this is an example, okay? It's, uh, so it's hard. So yeah, in this example you can see a guy with a, oh, I had to move it. Uh, Yes. Here. Sorry. Do you see now? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, in this example you can see a guy, okay, it looks really bad. But yeah, you can see a guy yeah, with a teacher, a background, whatever. So yeah, you can change the color of the teacher. Okay. Uh yeah, did I change it? Yeah. Yeah, you can see. So yeah, we are changing dynamically the SVG fill color of the of the teacher. Okay, and we got also a raster image in the background. Okay, and we're using SVG here. Okay, this is a pretty simple, pretty simple example, but yeah, you could do these cool things. Okay. Ah, uh, sorry. This is better. Yes. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. Thanks, buddy. So yeah, we're going to be able to achieve this kind of things. Okay. You will see more cool sample later. Okay. Going back to the here. To the presentation, okay, let's start rocking with SVG. So yeah, we're, we're going to start comparing SVG images with raster images, okay? Yeah, so yeah, the advantages of SVG images are, I think, the most important are three. They are scalable, uh, they are resolution independent, and so we can increase and decrease the size without loose resolution uh, as we have with uh, raster picture like PNG, if we increase the size, we're going to, to, to lose the quality, okay? And we get the pixelated images. So with FVG images, we don't, got ha we don't have that, okay? Also, it's human readable. That means that we can easily read the, the markup, okay? Uh, yeah, I think that not happen with PNG file, for example, okay? Uh, what else? They can be manipulated in the browser. That's also because we can change, we can do things before had the final version only. Okay. So yeah, I think everybody in this room open it by mistake, the PNG file, I'm pretty sure. Okay. Uh, you get this thing. But comparing with SVG images, you got this. It's nice. Okay. It, I think it is pretty good. You can understand what we got more or less. In this example we are showing a smile face, okay. Uh, I would like to comment 
one, I think the most important attribute here is the view mode, okay? It's composed of four numbers, the min x, min y, width, and height. I define the coordinate system of the whole SVG images, image, okay? So you can also see that we got other objects like circle, um, path, or whatever, that also are using coordinates, but those coordinates are based on this main coordinate system. So they are, the, 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 the whole thing is the view box attribute, okay? So in this case, uh, the first one, the cycle, let me point it here, okay? Oh, awesome. You can see here, uh, this is the uh, coordinate system, okay, we're defining. And here we're using a cycle where we're defining, a, 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 we're, we have put the cycle in the middle of the whole thing, it's 200 by 200. Uh, in the, cent the, the center of the circle is in the middle of the whole SVG here. And we are getting a radius of 78. So we got shoo, this cycle, okay? Uh, it's filled with yellow, as you can see here, okay? That's the cycle of the eyes, okay? By default, they are black. Okay, and the mouth, the mouth is the path, okay? The path also is based on the day, the D attribute also based on the coordinate system, but it's hard to, to, to see how it's related, okay? It's easy for, with the cycle. Okay, next one. Okay, we can also style uh, SVG images, okay? There are many attributes we can use, but here I'm, I'm commenting only four. I think they are important, the fill, Stroke, stroke width, and opacity. We can use Xcode, color, uh, gradient, patterns, um, yeah, whatever you want, like CSS. Okay. So in this example, okay, we are we are creating a um, a gradient. Okay. Okay. Here in the top, and then we are using it uh, to fill the the outer circle, as you can see here. Okay. We are defining. We are using it here to fill the stroke. Okay. With a width of ten. Okay. And then in the inner cycle, we are filling that with an orange color, okay, as we can see here. So yeah, this is a good example of how to use attribute. But that's not all. We can also use a style attribute as we, we, we use with uh, HTML tags. We can use there the, the fill, the stroke, whatever we want, okay? And uh, yeah, also we can target the uh, object with uh, classes and IDs, okay? The same as HTML things. Okay, here we have an example where we are setting, we are filling with blue this this cycle, and this one with red, red, red. This is, could be something strange. We could have that, doesn't matter. Okay, now it's my colleagues going to continue. So we can also animate SVG elements. Uh, there are different ways to, to achieve that. Uh, one is that uh, we are just targeting the elements with uh, with the uh, by classes or IDs, and then uh, we are just manipulating them with uh, CSS or JavaScript. Um, the other option is to uh, to use the uh, SVG animation elements, for example, the animate or set, or there are also uh, several other ones. Uh, the disadvantage of this is that uh, they are not supported in Internet Explorer, so depends. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, but, don't but worry. <laughs> it's okay because if your project, <laughs> so if in your project you have to support Internet Explorer, then you can uh, bridge this gap with uh, using CSS and uh, JavaScript. So like ja with JavaScript, of course, you can. Um, you can manipulate uh, every attribute of the um, SVGs. Um, so we can see on the example that uh, we are defining uh, an animation inside the, sh the shape, the SVG shape. This is one way to, to define it. Uh, the other way is that we can define it also outside of the shape but then we have to just add uh, the href attribute to reference which element we are going to uh, animate. Here you see that we are just animating the x uh, coordinates from uh, minus 100 to uh, 120 and uh, with some duration and uh, an indefinite loop. Yeah, excellent. Oh. 
Uh, sorry, I wanted to mention one more thing from the uh, regarding the previous sli slide. So there are certain things that uh, we cannot achieve with uh, CSS. For example, there is the uh, path element, and it has uh, data attributes and uh, like this D attribute, and um, there are the numbers which are actually defining. Um, yeah, yeah, there. <laughs> Uh, there are this this t attribute. The numbers are defining the shape of um, of the path, and this can be uh, animated with the SVG animation, but not with CSS. So um, yeah, and there are also yeah, some okay, other to, yeah. to, to fill the gap. Okay, we got there. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> now we are going to use some examples um, about what you could do with SVGs. Wow, it's like oh, not very good visible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, you can like ah, cool, but better, much better. So uh, they are simply uh, SVG icons, and we are or they, <laughs> the author of this. Um, CodePen is uh, using CSS animations uh, to just animate the shapes inside. So it's uh, we are going. We are already uh, we already published the slides, so uh, you can just uh, check out the code and browse around how they they are exactly done. So we don't exactly go into the details how these examples are implemented. Yeah. Other example is, for example, this uh, nice menu expanding. So you can just like implement something like this. There are different versions of it. It's pretty cool, I think, also to have some visual effects. This is also purely done with um, with SVGs and um, and CSS animations. The next one is some working shapes. So um, here uh, they are combining uh, the CSS animations with the <coughs> SVG animations. So here um, you can see that the the here is the animate uh, tag, and they are actually doing what I mentioned before. It's a path, and they are whoop. What, what happened? Ah, okay. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Uh, so and then um, the paths are animated to to achieve like the values of the paths are animated to just achieve this working effect. And this example is very similar to the um, to the very first one we showed with the T-shirts. So we use a raster image, um, and then there is an overlay uh, with with an SVG, for which we can change the colors. So it looks like the whole sofa is changing color. We can also use text in SVGs to achieve some nice effects and nice nice animations on them. So this is also just yeah. just done with CSS animations. The other one is also a nice one with some video background. So uh, basically, you can see here the markup how how it looks like, and uh, you just define the the position where it should stay uh, in within your SVG. And you can apply anything uh, like any colors or masks or filters or um, yeah anything you can apply to uh, any other uh, SVG element. <laughs> we can also use filters, so um, you can define them within your SVG, and uh, they are usually. Uh, manipulating the colors, or uh, for example, giving like a blur to to the element, and uh, you can reference these filters by the IDs. So uh, basically, here we are showing that uh, we are applying the the above uh, defined filter to an image, a raster image with the filter attribute, 
and uh, below you can see that uh, actually you can also apply filters with CSS. So um, you have to keep in mind that if your SVG is not in line in HTML and you are using CSS to apply it, um, you then have to add the path to the file before the uh, ID hash. Yeah, okay, sorry, before I go to the next one, I have to say that after 20 years I found a useful example of linear algebra in, in use. Okay, I, I'm using a matrix, I never used it before, so <laughs> also I can use it to draw. Stronger. <laughs> so, next one. Yeah, so as I mentioned also before, and you saw in the examples, you can just use uh, raster images within uh, SVG. This is how you define it, so just like referencing the file, and um, then you can define, for example, attributes and filters. And yeah. um, one thing we would like to mention just very quickly is that uh, sometimes when you, when you export the SVGs, uh, from the editor, uh, you have a lot of metadata, some some useless attributes you just like. Actually, you rather remove because if you have to work with it uh, afterwards, it's um, it's quite difficult and to to read the file. So just um, make sure you you check the file and you remove. For example, it happens that you move an element within the editor, and it gets a transition instead of in adjusting the x and y uh, coordinates. So just to make sure that it's uh, it's easy to work with the file afterwards. Yeah. So SVG is supported in um, all the major browsers, also in Internet Explorer, <laughs> which is great. Um, well, uh, it might happen that uh, some attributes, some functionalities are not 100% uh, working completely, but um, there are pretty good polyfills to, to apply to just like solve this issue. So how do we include the SVG in HTML? We have several possibilities. One is to use the image tag and just reference our SVG image in there in the source uh, attribute. Um, the backside of it is that then you cannot manipulate any, um, any attributes, uh, cannot change uh, colors or apply any uh, animations to it. Uh, the, so if you have to actually do something like that, then uh, you have to either hard code it in the HTML or um, there is another option, the uh, object uh, element, where uh, you can reference your SVG and then it doesn't uh, load all your SVG into the HTML, but it loads the SVG markup into the DOM when, when it's loaded. So you still have the possibility to um, to change the attributes with CSS and JavaScript. Yes, please. <laughs> Sorry, could you please all, all keep the doors open, please? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. So how do we? Um, you can go to the next slide. So how do we use uh, SVGs um, in Drupal? We can either hard code it uh, into the Twig templates or uh, we can use the include function of uh, Twig. So um, that's pretty handy and it's much more clean uh, to, to use the include function. Um, one thing to point out here is that uh, the at team name points to the team's uh, template directory. So uh, relative to that, you have to navigate then to your assets. So yeah, we're going to continue showing some examples, okay? Uh, these steps here is only for within the slide, but we're going to comment in a live demo, okay? So yeah, going back, we get aside, okay? Let's meet, let's use, okay. Okay, in this example, I'm going to show how we got icons displayed in a, in a content type, so where we are adding animation to, to the icons, okay? and um, we get colors, okay? So what we did was create content type, okay? Uh, set here, where we are referencing a paragraph, okay? Uh, you can pick up a, an icon, 
okay, at the end it's an SDG image. Okay, uh, we can pick a color, okay. This one example, and we can set the title, whatever we want, okay, we can change the color, let's pick a darker one. Okay. Ah uh, yeah. We got it here. Uh what we got it here. <coughs> okay. So yeah, you get the color changes and this how do we do that? Okay. Let's switch to its pure stone. Sorry, let me move it here. Okay. Uh, it's too big for me. So uh, uh, what is the icon thing? <coughs> Okay. Uh, maybe make it a bit bigger. Yeah. It's okay for you. Did you see? Yeah. Can you read? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah. And here we don't have too much to say. Okay. But yeah, we are rendering here the content. Okay. Uh, the content we are referencing the paragraph. So yeah, if you go to the paragraph, tweak. Okay. We got here the magic. So here, what we're doing is uh, including okay an SVG file dynamically using the paragraph uh, entity. Fields. Okay, so we choose. Sorry, let's. So when the user pick up uh, an icon, going to show we load dynamically using the include. As I explained before, we point to the theme and we go back to the asset folder and bing, we got this video loaded using the include. Uh, yeah, and we also display the title and the text. The the magic here is that we are using the entity here to load him the SVG file. Okay, and uh, what happened with the animation? We have to go. To the SPG, this is one example, okay. Increase. Here we're defining in the SPG, we're defining the animation at some point here. You add it in by CSS, okay. So, yeah, uh, the more important thing is the color, okay. We are filling the icon with the color defining in the paragraph for the icons, okay. So, here we're picking up and uh, displaying here the color. Okay. Uh, if you go back here, the paragraph, yeah, that's it. As you can see, we're also passing the, the we are passing by inheritance the the value to the SVG. We are not running here, but we're passing through the tweaks. Okay. So yeah. So we wanted to actually mention that, uh, for example, if you go to the uh, SVG file from, yeah. then. We are using here the uh, the variables. If you go, yeah, so the the uh, field values, and this is possible because we are including this SVG into uh, the paragraph template, and it's then inheriting all the variables. Exactly. More examples. <laughs> yeah. So the the. Um, so don't mind to like trying to read this, these slides. We just like they are for for further reference, but we are just going to explain those bullet points here in the code. So that's more for later on if you want to check these slides. Uh, so here in this example, uh, we are having a content type with two fields. One is to upload an image. So here we already uploaded one, and then you have a list of filters. And these filters then uh, get applied uh, to the image. So you can just change them, yes, to change the effect. So you can do like black and white or sepia or. Yeah. Yeah. That is really bad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can play around. <laughs> Um, yeah, to just to let you know, in the last slide uh, we will have uh, <laughs> we will have the um, the repository, the GitHub repository, to 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 achieve the, to access this um, this code. So you can just um, play around with it or look a bit closer if you just couldn't read everything now. Um, so how it is done um, in the code, we have uh, the node template where we are including <laughs> yep. uh, where we are including a partial tweak template. Uh, we decided to just show another use case like there are different 
ways to, to include um, SVGs. Here we uh, created a partial template where we hard coded then the SVG in there. <coughs> and we are receiving actually, like, okay, we are defining at the beginning all the, the possible filters that uh, you can choose. They, the IDs of these filters has, have to be in sync with the uh, Drupal uh, list field, of course. Because at the very bottom, if you can go to the bottom, yeah, please. Okay, uh, here we are. We see that we use a raster image and passing the uh, the link to to like where it is located, what you just uploaded, and then also uh, we are applying a filter with uh, the filter name they just uh, chose in in Drupal. And then we are uh, including this partial in the node template with the values of these two variables. And then we have a last example <laughs> that will be a city trip of our Drupag. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so it's uh, Franz dog's name. Yeah. <laughs> so we can give the uh, the name of the dog, and then uh, we can choose, for example, uh, the dog will be traveling in Amsterdam. What what do you want, guys? Uh, by day or night, he should travel. I know. Everyone says no one likes daylight. <laughs> Bad, yeah, so you can pick up a color for the boat, okay. and he is like always picking crazy colors. Important thing is that More something contrast, contrasting. Oh, and not so much like the boat. <laughs> this is the lighter. Yes, please add the light one here. Yeah. Dark. Yeah, now dark. <laughs> something. I'm back in. Wow. <laughs> it will be a beautiful boat. And then you can also uh, set the speed of the boat because he has a boat, yes? Yeah. <laughs> and then um, we can also decide if it should be a classic pug or a black or white. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Aww. you have nice. our group <laughs> Yeah, but the best, this is the best. Wow. Sorry. N nice, nice colors, Fran. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he always wanted to show the ninja pug. Yeah, need to show the ninja pug. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Yeah, but it's cool the way we can easily modify the SVG. I guess something cool. You know, we can. Like, let's show the daylight. Yeah. Daylight? Daylight? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you just did. Yeah. Just so that you see the beautiful colors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how it looks in, in code. Yeah. I know it's cute, but... <laughs> so we have a content type, uh, city trip. Yes. And uh, if you scroll up, uh, not that much. <laughs> Here you see that we are uh, setting some classes based on uh, the values you are uh, choosing in the uh, edit interface. So here we are setting if it should be night, then we are adding a night class, which we then uh, f uh, sh later use it uh, to style. Uh, and also we are adding classes for the speed. And uh, down there you can see the markup. So we are including here, like we have the background image a little bit not so wide. So don't wonder <coughs> why it's included twice. It's because we, we needed a, a wider image to, to be able to then animate it because it's like moving. Um, so that's why. And we didn't want to use uh, CSS because we, uh, we have to actually uh, just apply uh, some filters um, to to the colors so we have to have the markup in in the um, dom so here you can see the file for the background and you see that we are uh, defining a filter here which darkens and desaturates uh, a bit the uh, colors and in this Tile. Okay, so it's like really not beautiful code here, <laughs> but yeah, so um, 
it's just for demonstration purposes. Um, so here we are then uh, saying if it's night, then all these colors should uh, have this filter applied, which just darkens the colors. <coughs> And yeah, as you see, this is, for example, a file that you don't want to have hard coded in your tweak template. Yeah. And uh, for the doc, if you can open, yeah, please. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for the doc, uh, we have uh, again uh, the SVG with some filters. So here we we apply the, the same filter to the uh, to the back back leg, so like the back leg which is uh, more far uh, from us to uh, have it a little bit darker and uh, you can also see that, yeah, <laughs> okay with this color it's not yeah, so not visible but <laughs> it's <Sunny>. okay. <laughs> and then uh, you can also see that we are applying then uh, in these styles the different colors we are picking. So this is again because we are inheriting these uh, variables. So we are just <coughs> using the the value of these fields. I, uh, can you go back up, please? Yeah, sorry. Uh, so I wanted to mention that uh, we are also defining a default value because if you don't define any uh, fill for an SVG element, then it's black. So it's better if like in this case, we just define uh, a color, like a default fallback color for certain elements. Um, and if you scroll down, <laughs> then you can see that we are also using the uh, text to just display the label of the node, which is actually the name of the, the dog. Yep. Yeah, but it's the presentation, so... So we would like to thank you to everyone who, who helped us with this presentation. Uh, we would like to thank you to Audrey Brockhaus. So uh, she, she held a session in uh, DrupalCon Seattle. Uh, you can find some links to her presentation and also some resources. So she, it was an awesome session and it is inspired us a lot. And um, she also allowed us to, to use some of her resources. So thank you very much. <laughs> uh, we also would like to thank to our colleagues, so to Yule and to Pablo to help with uh, the graphics, the SVGs, and uh, also Yule made our slides look much better than, <laughs> than before. Uh, and um, also we would like to thank you to Christoph <laughs> for the idea and the support um, for the proposal. Uh, motivating always. Yes, <laughs> and all the company who, who listened to, uh, to listened us, us uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> get, gave feedback and stuff, so thank you. <laughs> yeah, just a reminder to you, uh, one S is supporting uh, contribution day tomorrow. Please join to us and contribute. Community needs you. Uh, yeah, we have three, uh, three. I don't know how to say that, but three different things. Uh, mentor contribution, first time contribution workshop. Please don't be shy and join. Uh, join our contribution, okay? There are plenty of non-code tickets. Yeah. Come and contribute. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, remember you that there is a survey you can fill. Uh, yeah. To get feedback, always good. Yes. Please give um, us feedback. <laughs> thank you very, very much. Uh, any question? Any GUI tools to, if I want to trace an image or create shapes or... Is there a microphone? Yeah, there is a microphone. There you can, or someone can pass him. Thank you. So I'm just wondering uh, if you can recommend any GUI tools to, if I wanted to trace an image like the t-shirt example, and create some shapes. Yes. Make animations. So basically what, what I personally always use is Inkscape because I use Linux. So I'm not, 
I'm not a designer, or so like usually I'm I'm uh, changing images and uh, not really creating them. So I know illustrate probably illustrator can also do something like that, or a sketch. Um, yeah, but Inkscape for sure. <laughs> Can you change the, the second example you showed? Is there microphone, any microphone. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> you don't make us work. So the second example you showed, um, you had an image in the background that or embedded an SVG and changed uh, and then applied effects to it, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you change the image? Um, yes, uh, sure. You can just go to like yeah, the second content. Example, the uh -huh, yeah, yeah, the sure. filter image. Yeah, for sure. One second. Uh, the, filter image. Uh -huh. Oh, need to edit it You I have other dragon dra dra <laughs> But it's right. <laughs> okay, let's see. Double click, maybe? Uh, what paper? Uh, oh, this one. Wow. Is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh. No, no, it's working, it's working. Yeah. Getting what do you there. want, Christoph? Oh, oh my god. Waves, please. Yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's too wavy. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's awesome how we can do it. Yeah, it's... Uh, can you show the source code, please? Like on the render page? What, what? Show the source code, like inspect? Ah, inspecting here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But where's the wave effect? Is it gone? Sorry. Oh, there. Okay. So. Like here, you, there are all the filters yeah. in, in the uh, CG markup, yeah. and you are just then by ID you are then referencing, so you can see in the image the filter, yeah. and it's referencing the sepia one. Yeah, no. right here. It's pretty easy. Cool. Can you? Can you take the microphone, please? <laughs> because we are recording, and uh, yeah, people will yeah. want to know the question. Um, what modules uh, did you use for, for the filter, and how did you realize this? So, um, for like uh, in the in the examples, we uh, we used what like only f uh, field value module, and um, yeah. yeah, we are only using. So models to get easy the value but for filter and um, then we are creating the filter by scratch yeah. so yeah uh, so basically for the filters you can actually just look around in the internet I that's what I did <laughs> because it's quite hard to to get like uh, these matrices working nicely so I always just pick you know like look for for some cool effects and uh, copy these matrices um, uh, yeah. So you can go to the um, uh, with the filter image thing. Yeah, it's a partial. Um, yeah, that, sorry, sorry. Yeah. So yeah. here yeah. you can see different ways to implement the filter. Yeah, this is within the matrix, but yeah, you can also yeah, there is, for, for example, the Gaussian yeah. blue. Yeah, they provide different thi different tools or things or uh, attacks to uh, top or to create filters. Yeah. But, yeah. You can find in like uh, in the documentation yeah. um, like a lot of um, filter effects you can use, and also very nice examples then to just like you know <laughs> borrow them and use them on your. Yeah. Can you show us the pug again? Yeah. <laughs> Always. Yeah, animated. Yeah. <laughs> the animated yeah. Are you sharing the code? Yeah, uh, on the last slide, actually, we we put uh, the uh, the link to the repository where you can just uh, get uh, it's with ddev. So uh, there is also a database uh, for it. The only thing when you import the database is that like you have to upload a new image because obviously that's the yeah. Not there. We're using ddev yeah. to get the environment, so you only have to did it a start and you get the site working and you can try. And of course, here in this example, we could have done like many other animations for like birds and the bikes and stuff. So, for next time, we have more time for it and yeah. we do it. But you can play around with it. 
Mm-hmm. Oh. I wanted to ask, um, how do you organize the communication between front end and design? So let's say, for example, you have to want to have a configurable icon set, and all icons actually need to be done the same way, otherwise your fiddle variable might not work. So is it uh, like a designer task, I have to do it a certain way, or do you clean up in front end afterwards? Well, ideally, we get uh, at least a clean markup from the designer, so fill will always going to work. So there are certain attributes which are actually just basic attributes for every SVG uh, element. So uh, the designer's job is only to, like if you have the, ch the shapes, for example, it happens that we want to use different variables and uh, we want them to unify, for example, two shapes to one and it then should be a path and not a rectangle or whatever. Then we can also just like ask for help. So, for example, I personally, I'm not uh, very much uh, into the creation of the SVGs. I'm more, more the front-ender who uses it. So I usually, um, if the designer is our internal designer, then it's uh, perfect. <laughs> if it's an external one, it's more difficult because like the communication is uh, just more difficult. But usually, um, yeah, like if if we cannot communicate with the the designer, then we clean it up ourselves as good as we can. It usually works actually, yeah. like just cleaning up. But yeah, it takes time, so it's better. To, I think like in, in most of the editors there is an option for example to like not export metadata or like certain informations like branding information and things and like that. We don't that. have to be afraid of modifying the SVG markup. So it's just XML markup so, so we can just take a, a meta tag and delete and nothing will happen. <laughs> yeah. More questions? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.